All right, well, we're, we're recording. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Um, I have to say, I am flying down to LA in a little bit, so I only have a little bit of time. I maybe have like 30 minutes to be able to spend, but just knowing, really appreciating folks taking a moment for as the executive committee to get together. I know in a couple of weeks we have our full um, YDC group convening, and this is our opportunity to make sure that we're dialed in for that particular meeting as well as anything else we might need to take care of. And with that, Brian, I'm going to hand it over to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Robin. Yeah, I appreciate uh, the intro and excuse the fact that my printer's doing whatever it is doing in the background. We'll try to get through this, I, you know, relatively quickly. Um, um, but thanks to Melissa, you've gotten some materials in advance, you kind of have this like, I'd call it more generic agenda that's up on the screen right now. But I think Melissa also sent um, a kind of rough draft um, document as a PDF um, that we'll have Melissa maybe share or put up here in just a second. Um, Melissa, do you want to just not, we're not going to, we're not going to do like formal roll call. Um, um, well, maybe we could. I don't know how many people are actually on here. Um, maybe we could just do like the quickest. Maybe Molly, let's do, not Molly. I see Molly. I'm looking at something with Molly's name on it. Um, uh, um, Melissa, do you just want to be like, like run through the names you see and, sure. then, and then we'll go from there? Sure. Robin Johnson. Here. Tabidi Lewis. Here. Maricela Ortega Guzman. Here. Molly Rogers. Here. Erica McAlpin. I don't see Erica. And Zan Ogero. I don't see Zan. She was having computer issues earlier. Um, Diana Rojas. There's Zan. Diana Rojas, sorry. Here. Thank you. All right, I think that's that's our group. Well, let's get into it. Melissa, can you put that document up um, or do you want me to? Are we gonna look at the land acknowledgement? Um, Oh, well, actually, I'm, that's a good point. Before we jump in, um, maybe, Melissa, you could you can put that up. It's because it's got, um, one of the things we wanted to quickly talk about um, is, and I don't know if Anya is on the call. I think maybe, maybe not. But um, we just wanted to quickly, let or not quickly. We, um, we wanted to acknowledge that actually at a recent meeting that Anya was at. Um, look, there's some notes. <laughs> um, Legislative Commission on Indian Services meeting. Um, some tribes expressed. I'm reading this to you, which is easier that way. Concerns about state agencies doing land acknowledgments during meetings. There was, you know, some question about like, what's the purpose? Why are you doing this? It feels to some tribes like that the, the, the sort of genocide and, and, and the st stolen land was like being put in people's, put in the, in, in, in people's faces. Other tribes who were on this call, I wasn't on it, but again, Anya was, felt like there was, there was some value to sort of acknowledging these things and having the space in meetings. So I'm not suggesting that there was like, like, um, a definitive response from, from all uh, nine federally recognized tribes, but there was different sides. And I imagine folks probably in the middle or in different places around this. The LCIS, the Legislative Committee on Indian Services, is recommending that agencies stop doing land acknowledgements until the LCIS has its meeting in July. So I just wanted to give that as like a, a quick little preamble and wanted to A, make you aware, and then B, if it, it, folks have a 
perspective or opinion, wanted to make a little space um, for that because it's on our agenda, our quarterly agenda, and wanted to see um, if folks have either questions or, or comments. I know on our end um, at the bank and other organizations who I'm consulting with, the recommendation is um, if you have a land acknowledgement, you should also have some programming that gives your acknowledgement some teeth, so to speak. Um, I don't know where we're at with that. I mean, if we're, we just have a statement, I do feel like we have a fair amount of like DEI and justice intentionality. And I think some programming, but I don't know that it speaks specifically to indigenous or tribal communities in a meaningful way, or if it still feels performative and just in the wash of things. So I think that's all fair feedback. Thanks, Robin. Other input questions? You know, at our institution, people don't like that I uh, keep asking, are we going to give the land back? <laughs> if not, let's, what do we, you know? Uh, but yeah, I, I, I would concur with the performative component. Um, some institutions, I know one in California has uh, made a commitment to offering free uh, scholarships. And so I'm saying that to echo the, you know, what comes behind that? So, uh, because just to acknowledge it, it's, uh, you know, it's like acknowledging uh, enslavement without reparations. So, uh, which, you know, is <laughs> another question and issue. Other? thoughts or questions? So um, this is Molly. Hey Molly. Uh, I, I would honor the request from the tribes. I think that's, um, if that's a conversation and take our leads from our nine federally recognized tribes, if they wanna bring something forward for us to acknowledge and take, bring into space. Um, and maybe for us, it's, opening with space for us to just appreciate whatever we need to appreciate to come to the meeting to appreciate it um, and take the, the lead. If, if LCIS is recommends that we stop doing it um, and maybe that um, group will come up with something that they want us to do so that it does not feel like it is tokenizing or misrepresenting or doing in anything that was by no means behind the intent of land acknowledgements, but that they may feel, cause that's very real and honored. And I wanna really appreciate that. But I think we all bring something to the table. And even if we just start our meetings with kind of a space and for some of that, for some of us, it may just be really appreciating all of those who came before us. Um, and I think, so anyway, I would just be really thoughtful of, huh, maybe if, if this is the recommendation that we honor it, but that we still create space for us to come to the table on whoever we are and celebrate each other at the table. Thanks, Molly. Um... Oh, Robin, were you going to, I see you came off mute. Or... I was just going to ask how that lands for other folks, other thoughts, considerations. Maybe in response to that, Robin, and just as a, we as an agency, right, just like as a basic, baseline information, right? No, you should know that as a, through our juvenile crime prevention funding, which YDD administers, we are awarding um, dollars to the nine federally recognized tribes as, tribes as we do to the 36 counties for juvenile crime prevention. So those 
tribes and counties submit their juvenile crime prevention plans. And so there's, so there's some money that we're administering there. We also have, um, um, not a, well, I think if I'm not mistaken, eight grants, community investment grants that were awarded to three of the nine tribes. So some of those tribes have multiple grants. Um, and that was happened. And so in this current biennium, we have these grants that we're managing and those tribes are um, have received dollars from us. Um, and that I think comes as a result of um, well, their great work. Um, we should also maybe, we should also note that in our strategic plan, we've got um, a kind of honoring tribal sovereignty strategy and, 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 and we could, back to sort of Molly's point, it, rather than me going on and on right now, but we could probably highlight some of the things that, that, that the agency has done, not, not in the grant, I mean, if folks wanna know more about the grants, we're happy to share, um, but it may be less the performative thing and more the substantive pieces that are happening that I feel like we've shared probably here and there over the last year, but if folks, if there's a way for us to, to highlight that, that might be a, that's something we could do. And I'll quickly say, we do a report every quarter that goes to the LCIS. And so we just submitted that report and happy to share some of the information from that report, if that's, if the highlights, like, you know, from, from that report, if folks feel like that's a something they wanna hear. Ryan, are you recommending that instead of doing our more traditional land acknowledgement, we do more of a nod towards what the agency is doing? Yeah. Of tribal communities? Yeah. Yeah. Like building a little bit on, I think, what I heard you say, Molly, but, I, but still keeping it focused on tribal communities, we could say, here's what we're, here's what's actually happening. So, yes. I think um, just on the other side of the of the coin is um, if we stop, I understand the, the concerns about performative. It doesn't feel like the youth development division is performative if we have all of this programming in place. I think another, on the other side of the concern is if we stop doing the more traditional or even slash performative Will we get called out on not doing it any longer, not holding that space? So I think that that's another consideration. Um, in my work with tribal communities, it, it, I think Brian, to your point earlier, it does feel like a mixed bag. It feels like there are some like, why are you doing this? Is it performative? Do we actually mean something by it? Or, and then there are others who are like, yeah, absolutely, keep acknowledging because you all, you, we all are on tribal lands and we that does deserve some acknowledgement. So I wonder if there's a hybrid option between revisiting what we currently do, really thinking critically about what, what may be performative language, where can we infuse some call outs of the work that we feel confident is in support of community, indigenous communities specifically. So we can take away the hopefully bringing that in takes away from the performative tone and is actually demonstrating, here's what we are up to. Um, I'll just offer that as. Yeah. For um, I just wanted to add really quickly, um, it does feel performative. And I totally get what you're saying, Robin, in the sense that we're, you know, we have actions backing up um, our support in what we're saying. Um, but I, I just think it's important to acknowledge that with 2020 came this whole DI bandwagon thing with organizations and foundations really um, putting these statements out there without action. Um, and it, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, just to like promote to their organizations or what it is exactly, or if it's for funding or um, some sort of a leverage, but I, if we are going to do the land acknowledgement, um, I think there is meaningful ways that we can back it up with action, whether that be an agreement for like X amount of dollars to go towards tribal communities or some sort of an, um, an action plan. 
Um, and I'm not sure exactly what that looks like. I think we could be creative um, in terms of like what we think is meaningful and like reach out to community partners to see what would be helpful for them. Um, but on, I think it's more than just saying the land acknowledgement. I think it's necessary um, to like help rebuild the trust in words by following up with that action. Yeah, I appreciate that. It might also be a great accountability check, right? Also, because if we stop having things to reference in our, here is our um, investment back into indigenous communities, then maybe that's when we stop doing the land acknowledgement. And we only are able to bring in a land acknowledgement of a sort when we have those like concrete and we invest in these ways, we stand behind these words in these ways, that if that programming, that funding, whatever it might be, go away, that that's our barometer for, um, we can't say this anymore because we're not investing the way that we're saying we're committed to investing or we have in the past. Yeah. Well, I, I want to, since we have limited time, I don't, I'm, I'm hearing um, like some, like backing the words up. Um, we do still have that LCI's recommendation to stop doing it. <laughs> so I wonder if there's like, if we want to, and yeah, so I, I'm trying to figure out how we, move forward Ryan, and is it, the lcis an ongoing partner of ours or this is like a one-time moment we're getting some insight to feedback from them or no i think they're an on they're the legislative commission on indian services yeah is an ongoing partner connection we submit quarterly reports to them they help to support the work that happens in government to government meetings uh, that happen on a pretty regular basis so so what if we ask what if we say hey we're revisiting this we're taking your words to heart yeah. um we you know these are the reasons why we would love to continue to do the statement wanting to back it up with our actions we're going to use it as an accountability barometer for ourselves and if they're like nope our feedback is still just knock it off then we then absolutely. But I wonder yeah. if it's an opportunity for a little bit more dialogue. Yeah, we, we can ask Patrick Flanagan is a relatively new executive director. And I think that's a, that's a question we can definitely ask. They have their July meeting, but we can ask that question and then see. Um, yeah, we, let's do that. Like it. We acknowledge and say we're stopping until we hear feedback from you. Yeah, yeah. I like it. All right. Again, appreciate that. Um, I'm going to keep us moving forward. Um, so we wanted to have you, maybe y'all have had a chance. Um, well, sorry, before I go, any last comments on this? Haven't heard from some folks, Diana, Commissioner Ogero, others, but if you, if there's any last comments or questions um, or throw something in the chat, if you feel like you want to do that. All right, not hearing anything. Um, so, Cord, I appreciate your comment. Um, um, appreciate your comment in the in the in your in the chat, and also Commissioner Ogero. Yes, thanks for um, throwing that note in there. Um, so we've sent, I said this at the beginning, Melissa sent the agenda. I, I may maybe really quickly walk you through it, but I'm interested in um, the questions that you see in front of you about what's missing, where are you interested in learning more about, what are your key questions, um, and then how can we best engage. So real quickly, just so that we're all like on the same page and maybe mostly you can scroll down as I kind of go through. I don't know, they're probably um, I don't know, oh seven or eight different um, um, topics here. Um, so, I, we've added some notes. So the one topic is around our community engagement work. And then sorry, you see lots of notes in here, but that that you don't need to 
Um, that's one, community engagement and council involvement. The next topic is legislation and policy update. So maybe Melissa scroll down so that people can, yep, awesome. And then, um, then there's strategic plan. Um, the SAG is our state advisory group. So again, remember the council serves as the state advisory group. And so we need to make space for that. And that's one place where we can talk about our prevention and juvenile justice work. Um, then we'll have community updates and then our director's report. Um, I've moved that to the end. Um, um, and so those are like the, I don't know if that's a half a dozen different topics that I have on our agenda. Um, thanks, Melissa, for throwing the questions into the chat. Um, now you'll see indented in each of these. I've actually added some, <laughs> we've added some content. Like, what does this thing mean, um, and what are we likely to be talking about? Um, um, and so there's just a few sort of sub bullets. But without getting into that, and Robin, since I know you need to leave in the next five or six minutes or so, are there um, just in looking at those, and maybe Melissa, you can. I bet I could do it. I will bold them so people are clear on what's what's actually a um, um, an a, a, a agenda item. But are there what is there anything missing? Is there stuff that jumps out at you um, as things that you're particularly interested in hearing more about? And I'll say we were going to start, I didn't mean to jump over this, between 8 and 9 a.m. So that sort of first hour where we're going to do want to make that space to kind of have breakout room discussions, just some chance for folks to, to, to build relationship and connect. So that's also um, part of the agenda. And I don't know if people have any feedback for how that went at our last quarterly meeting, but um, please let me know if you have any thoughts. I have a... Um, please, Tabidi. So I have a... Oh, I'm sorry, Zandi, you had your hand up probably before I put mine up. Go ahead. First. So will there be an option for Zoom on that day? Because I'm hemmed up from because this is a face-to-face -face meeting. I, this I'm is it's gonna be mm -mm, it's it's on it's a uh, virtual. Oh okay, all right, okay. For some reason I thought it was face to face. Okay, all right. You scared me with that. It's like you just messed up my whole schedule. <laughs> we 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 I'll I need a look at the quickest well Commissioner Ojo you go and then I'll say more uh, I would have to say that I have the same issues as everyone else when uh, things switch to being in person um, I would love to know a little bit more about what you're learning on some of the uh, field tours and what the issues are that different communities are facing um, and uh and particularly on how the equity, diversity, and inclusion work is going, responses to those that question six. Um, and uh, so those are some of the things I'm interested in knowing more about. Thanks. Yeah, those are, we were going to, I'll say real quickly, A, on the, the meeting, Tabidi, thanks for bringing that up. We'll be virtual. We are wanting to get back to some kind of hybrid in person and virtual, but we are waiting for um, the public services building where we um, typically, uh, where we have our meetings to be appropriately outfitted to do a, a, a hybrid meeting. And I don't think we have all the tools in place for that. So don't wanna rush that and get ourselves into some technical you know, difficulties. So we will be virtual for June. 
shoot for sometime in September of like actually doing a, the hybrid. So if you want to come in person, you can, but then we can, for those who, who don't want to travel or can't travel, um, we'll do a hybrid. So that's a quick note on that. And then um, we will hit those topics around the community engagement work that we're doing and our visiting of grantees. And, and, and in that state advisory group, that sort of justice piece, we will, we would, we're planning on talking more about um, the scoring around the, the questions around that question six and getting an update from the juvenile justice committee on that. Can you confirm the date of the June meeting? June 9th, Thursday, June 9th. I do like the uh, item of uh, grant reviewers coming from local communities and scoring uh, those applications from those areas. I think that I, I like that. Oh, that is that is one of the things that like in coming out of some of those um, those visits and Paul and others are here on the line somewhere. So <laughs> yeah, you're getting a little little preview of some potential highlights that we're happy to share um, a little bit more about. Bye, Rowan. Thanks for being here. I know, Paul, is there any, any thoughts you want to add to this, uh, to that, to just the, the, the visits and, and the engagement work? Absolutely. Uh, so um, I agree. One of the things that has come up is this, how do we support um, the local communities uh, just what it looks like and the experience and the impact that those grants have in those areas. And I think that's been a consistent story that we've heard as we've gone into smaller and smaller communities uh, along the way is, is it looks different sometimes. And how do we honor that and um, help that be a part of our process? And I think one of the things that uh, at least Bill and I have talked a lot about because he's been on a lot of these trips with me so far is, is that uh, having an understanding of what these communities deal with on a daily basis is important. And, um, and I think local community reviewers, if they're able to help partake, can help put that lens on that work. So um, yeah, what that looks like coming, I'm not sure, but I will say that the trips have been um, well received as far as I can tell from everybody um, and just some great conversations as we've been able to engage with uh, quite a few uh, on every trip uh, so far. So looking forward to the next ones. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, if there, you know, if you need a little time, I mean, you can spend some time looking at this, but one of the things that, that I wanna make sure is happening is, is that as we are having our meetings that it's not just, you know, the us staff um, talking at you. <laughs> so, um, and or if we are talking at you that we're really answering questions that um, as council members you have and want to hear about. Um, so that's illuminating some some points. I think we've gotten a bit into this, into a pattern of um, sharing lots of updates with you and PowerPoints. And I know that can be a lot of information to take in. And I think in some ways, um, I did that on purpose um, when I started just so that there was transparency and we're on and maybe because we're online some of that some of the kind of natural discussion um, is a little harder to, to, to make happen and so we've, we've given you a lot of information over the last year and a half <laughs> so we will do that um, but want to just be real sensitive to making it worthwhile and to do what we can to to have conversation and discussion. So, um, oh, and Commissioner Rosero, I appreciate that comment. Yeah, we'll do that first hour of just giving folks a chance to kind of build some connection and relationship. And I will say, finally, we will be getting ourselves back into person and more in-person things are happening with our visits. I got to spend a few days in Washington, DC with um, Molly and other YDD staff. So 
we'll get, we'll work, you know, one step at a time, we'll get to being able to being in person. Um, and and it, I, I will say for myself, it was really great to get to spend some time, um, you know, with people face to face. Wow, <laughs> what, a, what a change after a couple of years. Um, Oh, here's a point Commissioner Roger making around measure. Oh, oh, measure, is that ballot measure? Ballot measure 110. Is that the um, drug decriminalization ballot? Yeah, that, you know, I don't know. We had a status, well, staff had been attending some of those work sessions. Now I, with Sanji having um, left, she's not in those for us. Um, I didn't wonder, Molly, I know you were a part of some of those early. I'm not sure if you still are. Molly is like on three meetings um, during every hour. Um, <laughs> I've learned I learned that <laughs> over the last week well, and a half, and I'm sure you are. Go, Molly. What yeah. do you think? Suzanne, I, I think it would be great. I think that that's definitely something that um, that would be of interest. My question would be, what kind of information would we like? And so um, we could work with OJD to kind of get some statistics, I think, as a piece of it. I think the other part is we might be able to touch base with OHA and find out um, where the grant processes are for the burns. And just out of curiosity, out of that process, how many of the burns addressed youth in the creation of their behavior? And burns are behavioral, health resource networks, which were the funding, the $370 million. So I think that we could get a couple data points that doesn't, that we, I don't know that we can go really deep yet because I just don't know that we know that much, but I think those two data points, I think we could pull together. And Brian, I can add that, I, I can get that information. Molly, that would be great if I know, if you don't wanna- I, I can do it. You can do it, great. and. Just you, we can connect offline if needed, and we've got some had some good inroads and connections with OHA and just generally around youth development uh, um, pieces. Um, so what it might uh, be is I just might make the connections for the right people. It is probably what I will do is make the connections to the people, and then staff can take it from there. Sounds perfect. All right, we will note um, that we you know maybe under that. Um, state advisory group section, we can see what information we can um, pull together. All right. Um, any other agenda items, questions? I, I'll say this, um, it's kind of toward the end. Well, to at the end, it's not kind of. Um, the committee updates, we, with Future Ready Oregon and various things we've been, <laughs> and, and, and now these grantee visits certainly have um, been, um, work going a lot of going pretty fast in a lot of different directions and then that recent conference but um we do have committee meetings juvenile justice has been meeting monthly um we've got the policy um and research group, uh, committee meeting i think in the next week or so um disparity and equity is meeting and then i think the youth committee um are all slated to meet and i would say full transparency like youth committee has not met since um i don't know i see maricela shaking your head like maybe late summer um, um or early fall yeah. so it's been a while staffing changes and things are happening but i know that we're, we're getting things up and going and just appreciate people's patience um so should be able to have some good committee um at least updates on like having gotten together and 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 they're starting to you know get things moving i don't know maricela any thoughts about that yeah um i am actually not sure when the last time we met but i'm sure i can find it in my notes um i recently connected with jaime and we are um checking in next week just to discuss you know the direction we want to go in 
um, for you know the re the upcoming youth subcommittee meetings um, and if there's anything we want to change. Awesome, appreciate your patience. Yeah, with with Abe, right, Abraham. Abe. Yes, I'm sorry. That's yes. all right. You connecting with Jaime, our former council member, always encouraged. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just came from another meeting and there was a hype there too. So yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Um, so we will, we've got some, some, like I said, things are, things are starting to, to move um, with those committees. Yeah. Is there anything else that people um, back to these core questions? What's missing? We added ballot measure 110. We've talked a little bit about what you're interested in learning about. Um, any key questions that burning questions for folks? Um, Brian, I'm, I'm thinking about the um, strategic plan refresh retreat. And I'm, I'm kind of thinking that it could be helpful to try to bring. I mean, I, I don't think that that's necessarily like, I don't know, there's a lot of value in doing a, a rehash, particularly at, the, at this particular council meeting, but maybe bringing forward some concept of what we, we think the next steps are for discussion. Um, you know, like essentially like a little bit more description of, of what we envision as far as a retreat and, and refresh of the strategic plan might look like. Is that, I mean, that's, that's I'm thinking out loud, like that seems like something that I mean, we have a little bit of time to, to develop at least the, the bones of. Is that what you were thinking should happen there? The, I think, Court, I think that does sound good, but I, council members, what, do, what are you all thinking about like the that strategic plan and how, how are you all thinking about what you'd either like to hear or what you think may be helpful to kind of make that? to renew our our effort i'll say we are continue to drive on the on our planning efforts and have provided updates like electronically but i'd love to hear um oh timeline thanks maricela yeah other thoughts i should say if if what would be helpful would be a sort of a check in on where we're at in the strategic plan and identifying, you know, recent accomplishments, highlights of like the, maybe the most significant things we've accomplished so far, just to refamiliarize folks. That that's certainly also valid. I guess I just am reading the the item and trying to interpret what would be the best thing to, to deliver. Do you see um, Commissioner Ogero's comment. Yeah, I think in the last meeting, I think we had a lot of topics. And my recollection is that in our, when did we meet? Maybe March? I think for March, we didn't formally, Cord, to help me here, but I don't think we formally talked about the strategic plan as an agenda item. We just said, hey, here's a, PDF document, kind of this place map that we developed, and we've added the progress and the updates and some timeline information. So we gave you something to look at electronically, but we didn't actually talk about it. That's my recollection. So I guess in this meeting, what I'm hearing from both Maricela and Zan is that it would be helpful to just, we'll have it in as an agenda item, hit some of those high level timelines and uh, and sort of updates in court i think either we can have some conversation a reaction to what what we are thinking internally which is it would be good to try to organize a retreat now <laughs> when we'll do that is another question just given all this summer community engagement work and fall community engagement work but um that was our one of our thoughts molly i see your hand up Yeah, so I think on the agenda, I think what I would encourage us to, to bring up the strategic plan and do the updates and achievements and then just give us some space to kind of process what that would look like. Um, what I do feel like is we get our agendas really pretty packed. And um, I think how, you know, Zan, uh, Commissioner Ogero spoke of the small group was so valuable. 
is just giving us space to process um, and then practice our in-person before we start planning a retreat. Um, as many of us are coming back to the in-person meetings and setting up time, um, we've been able to kind of back to back this with other meetings. Um, and you know that I have the capacity to not multitask, but be in different spaces at different times. So I would really encourage us just to give us some space on the agenda to just inhale that and then give guidance. Um, that would be my, my recommendation at this particular meeting. Thanks, Molly. Something that, that I'm kind of interested in and, and could we could also do in this is there are a handful of things in a strategic plan that just haven't haven't really moved for, for various reasons. Either they the relevance maybe changed or or decreased, or the capacity wasn't there, you know, or or the, the timing hasn't been right. You know, I think there's all kinds of different reasons and valid ones. And I think that there's also an opportunity to look at stuff that has not yet happened and say, okay, well, what does it mean that this didn't happen? Is, is this something we need to now recenter and be really focused on getting done? Is it not, is, is it, does it look different? And I think that that's also something that I'm really curious about because I think there was some low hanging fruit that we, we got. I think there were some significant achievements, but I think there's some pieces that, um, I don't think we know exactly, at least for staff, like it's it's not always clear how all this stuff will move forward. So that's the other thing that I think could be really beneficial um, in terms of council input for, for us as we're trying to keep it moving. Thanks, Cord. I wonder, well, Molly, to your suggestion, and maybe this is a bit of a both and it, can we make space during that eight to nine o'clock is the is the is the moment to make space during that eight to nine or it's probably more like eight fifteen to nine right once we get people in the room and do all the other roll call and all that stuff um but i wonder if we could structure some of the small group breakouts around around some strategic plan questions not not like strategy by strategy but somehow just giving people a little space there um Tabidi, did you want to weigh in i'm just thinking out loud our, our strategic plan its end date is when this currently i know we just it's, it's got about three more years going or how much more time i, I I can't, I don't know, have a hard answer to that, but I think we put various timelines on the strategies and actions and Cord, you probably may be better off answering. I think it's more like a two, three year plan to BD, like with this, for this biennium, like we, yeah, that's my sense. It's more of a two or three year plan. So we're probably in the second year now. I mean, I like uh, Cord's suggestion, and um, I'm just thinking even within our, uh, I mean, we've had points where we say, okay, now let's look at the strategic plan and how we're going to execute it and what are the priorities, what have we done, and then here's what's remaining. And I, I just, whatever we do in that 45 minutes, give the group quite a bit of guidance as far as uh, here, even here are the ones that seem to be the easiest to do. And um, can we prioritize them? And then here they all are in general that you know haven't been driven or what have you. And uh, and then of course we have people responsible for them. But uh, so anyway, I, I like the idea. Uh, I can't figure. I mean, I we have fifteen minutes left, and I I can't articulate at this moment the 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 strategy. But there are people that do this all the time, and they know how to. That's good feedback. No, I appreciate it. I think we can offline, like Cord, Melissa, and I, like we can think about whether maybe during the actual meeting itself we'll have enough space and time to 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 both look at and then process, or if some combination of that little eight to nine or eight fifteen to nine o'clock, 
we'll we'll figure out where things fit, but we'll 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 plan for for um the discussion to cover and it may be an it feels like it probably really needs an hour. So we'll we'll look at what we can what we can manage. I was just going to say that, that, you know, one of the things that's interesting about the plan is it doesn't have a, an end date. You know, it, it wasn't really time bracketed, but a lot of the recommendations had 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 sort of time frames. Like there were things we were trying to do for the 21-23 biennium grant making. And there are, there's mention of things that we want to do in preparation for the 23-25 biennium. Um, and, you know, the, the drawback is that it kind of gave us maybe too much flexibility sometimes in when things might happen when they weren't specifically tied to um, a, a date or, or you know when when they had to happen. But the benefit is that I think it allows us to look and say, okay, well these these things are still hanging out there. Um, you know, how do they look now a little further on as as we made these other moves and accomplishments? You know, does that, you know, there, I think in some cases there were things that got accomplished that sort of reduced the need for other things. Um, you know, I think there were also goals that were kind of restated like three different ways um, across different, uh, different overarching goals within the plan. So, um, so I think that not having it like, okay, this is, we're doing all this before 2025, like it kind of allows us to, it's almost like a living plan in a way that we can now look at it and say, okay, like, Let's clean things up, refresh, and then you know what is the next the, the next step in the journey. Um, I don't know that that is a best practice. <laughs> I'm sure there are folks that would say no, it needs to be time bracketed. But that that's the way that we did it. I think has allows us to um, take a step back a year on and and decide what direction we want to go in. Thanks, Cord. Um, yeah, we got about 10 minutes left. Is there any others who haven't had a chance to weigh in? Um, I do see, and I'll just say this, um, we've got somebody on the phone and it looks like maybe one other person. Um, if there's any public need for public comment, we can have that at the end end of the meeting um, and that's when we usually do it. So if you're a member of the public know that we'll make space um, in the last, you know, well, we're in the last 10 minutes here, probably in just a, a few, couple more minutes, but I don't know if you do have a something that you do want to say um, for as part of public comment, we ask you that you keep it to help me hear Melissa two minutes and that you note in the chat that you have a comment to make. Thank you. I've heard from Mary uh, that she does not have a public comment, but I'm not sure who's on the phone. I don't know if that sounds audio or if that's someone else. <laughs> yeah, it sounds audio. audio. Okay, um, we're good then. No public comment for this meeting. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Melissa. Good to see you, Mary. Or well, see, see, not see you because your camera's not on, but that's okay. But I, we know you're there. We're acknowledging you. Um, uh, okay. Any, I don't. We don't need to keep you necessarily any longer than than uh, than is necessary. Um, Melissa, do you want to remind us of when? Maybe it's in this document. So, um, when the other committee um, meetings are over the next couple couple of weeks. Let's see. This Friday we have the. Equity and Disparity Committee meeting, if I'm remembering correctly, at noon. And uh, I think June 2nd is the Policy Rules and Research Committee meeting, also at noon, if I'm remembering correctly. And, um, and then as Maricela mentioned, I think Abe has been in touch uh, as we're working on scheduling the Youth Committee meeting. And the... Um, Juvenile Justice Committee meeting is the first Monday of every month from 1 to 3 p.m., I believe. I don't have that date in front of me, but Molly's nodding like, yep, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the summary of our committee meetings coming up. 
And of course, our council, the full council meeting on June 9, and we'll start at 8 a.m. Thanks, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, all right, I, I, th I think we can close us ourselves out. I know um, Robin's needed to log off a little early. We do appreciate each of you for showing up today as a part of our executive committee meeting and know that you are, those of you who are on today are like putting in time as um, committee chairs and or just kind of generally part of our um, council leadership as uh, Tabidia is as the coach vice chair of, of, of the council. So just appreciate you all taking the time and all the work you're doing on our behalf, um, on the behalf of, on behalf of youth around, around the state. Um, we will see many of you or some of you in some committee meeting <laughs> soon and then see you at the full council meeting on June 9th. We'll close. You get seven more minutes in your day. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Thank Melissa. You. Take care. Bye. Bye, everyone. Look at that. Bye, Corn. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Brian. See you later. Yeah, see ya.